Harold, how did appearing in the bowl game back in the Orange Bowl when you played, how did it affect the school and the community? What effect did it have on those two factions? Well, it had been since 1926, and uh, a bunch of us came in, uh, servicemen, had come in from Korea and so forth, which is a bunch of them here tonight. And uh, got together with Coach Gus and as all freshmen and came in, and then all of a sudden, you know, three years later, we were in the Orange Bowl. And uh, it was the greatest thing, you know, since sliced bread when we hit here. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, it's great then and it's, and it's greater now. And I thought about it a lot, you know, up at Florida State uh, about three weeks ago when we beat Florida State. And I said, I'm going to be back in the Orange Bowl. I played in it last time, and now I'm going to coach in it. So it's a real thrill for me and my family and everything else. What, uh, what were the similarities or the differences of, of how everyone reacted to your team being in the Orange Bowl to this team being in the Orange Bowl? Well, I think now that the uh, we got accepted, you know, given the bid to the Orange Bowl, that the town is behind us and everything else, and it's been quite a while since it has been, and uh, rightfully so. But then, uh, back in '51, we had uh, much larger crowds and so forth, and then. Uh, in 64, when I came here to, to uh, coach, we had some bowl teams, and then it started up and it picked up and, you know, in uh, some of the big games, and we had big crowds of community rallied behind us, which they are now. Everywhere you look, uh, in Dayland and so forth, all around the place, they got University of Miami t-shirts, hats, <laughs> so forth, and uh, it's great. Was it like that in 51? No, uh, not as uh, not as uh, much as it is now. I, don't, I don't really don't think so. It, uh, it's a big thrill in my life to be able to coach in Orange Bowl, and particularly against a good team like Nebraska. And, and uh, I've played against, coached against them twice, and, and uh, uh, we came out both times in the short end of the stick, but. Uh, this time we're going in to win, and it's a big challenge for us. We've got a big chore. What do you remember about that 51 game? Well, the big thing, we went into the game, and, and the big difference is uh, we went to the Orange Bowl then. Yesterday I checked in with my family at the Omni Hotel. In 1951, we stayed at the university in the dorm. We practiced at the UM Field. And on Saturday, we went, which happened to be January the 1st, we went down to the Orange Bowl and played, and that was the extent of it. We went to the banquet afterwards, and uh, that night, and uh, that was our big thing for the Orange Bowl at the time. Now, they got a whole week's activities planned, and things for the wives and the kids and the players and coaches and so forth, and it's quite a difference. Mm -hmm. What about the game itself? <coughs> Well, Clemson, as you, as you know, then back then we uh, played them. They came in with a big f football team. They had a big fullback, which ran up and down the field, you know, on us that night and that afternoon. <coughs> we came back, and we unfortunately we got some penalties, and uh, it cost us a ball game. But no comparison now, back in 1951 and today because uh, the kids today are much stronger and faster. And just a few minutes ago, I was looking at the game out on TV, on a tape in 1951. They have it on outside, and a bunch of us were standing around and played on it, you know, and said, well, today, those kids today would kill us, you know. They'd knock us right into the, to the bay, Miami Bay. Uh, <laughs> It's a complete different ball game. I was one of the biggest players on the team at that time at 219. And today we got fullback that runs, you know, it plays at 240. So it's quite a difference. You have been 
part of this program for as long as you've been in this level of football, and you've seen it in its dog days. Tell me about those days and what it, what your reaction to what uh, what's happened now, the resurgence of this program. Well, I came here in 1964, and uh, under Charlie Tate was the head coach at that time, and we went to two bowl games, 66, 67, in the, uh, and then uh, I've been this is my seventh head coach at the University of Miami, and different times have changed, and then all of a sudden the Dolphins came into the program, you know, in the city, and so forth. And at first, we weren't uh, hurt by it with our crowds and so forth. And then it seemed like there wasn't enough money to go around for one weekend. And uh, not till they started, you know, uh, coming up in their program also. And it kind of took over the, the town and people switch from the University of Miami to the professional ranks. But I think they're coming back now. I think the town is turning back into a college town. Uh, for instance, people complain about going to the Orange Bowl and, and uh, the parking and this and that and the other, the community. Well, last year I got one chance in three years to go to the Dolphin game. I went, happened to be the Jets game, and I went down there, and right before the kickoff, I looked up, and I just happened to think how people were complaining about the Orange Bowl and the parking and everything in the community, how bad it was down there in that area. There wasn't a seat in the house, so it can't be all that bad. And of course, the Dolphins were winning, and when you're winning, everything else takes, you know, takes over. And, uh, this year we had good crowds at some of our games and some we didn't. But I think uh, deep down, I think we got a good college football group in this town and the young people and I think all I have to do is, which we're doing now is selling it and I think it will come forth, you know. What was it like for you to go through seven head coaches and then be in the position you are now? Can you embellish on that? Ooh, that's a tough one, but, uh, well, I had four tough Christmas holidays, okay? That's right after the season. Coach retires, quits, or is uh, released, you know, fired. And uh, you don't know where you're going to be and, and, or what you want to do. Or, uh, but I did... I was in respective that I wanted to coach at the University of Miami. I always have. I like Miami, and I came down here in 1948 out of Korea, and uh, under Andy Gustafson, graduated from here, 52, and came back in 64 under Charlie Tate, and I've been here ever since. And and uh, I like the town. I like the school, and. I think it's it's back now, the uh, the college spirit at, at the University of Miami in this town. Did you ever worry that they would take this football program and bury it? At one time I did, yes. Uh, and it concerned me quite a bit because I knew what it could be. Uh, if the right person took it over and it was backed by the right people and that's from the top right on down and and uh, I didn't think that at one time I, I didn't think they'd ever you know do away with, foot, with football but then they started and you know rumors start and how one thing builds up and but uh, I don't think they will now under the boss that we have now, uh, because he's a worker and, uh, and he's a hustler and a go-getter, and uh, he's produced and therefore improved himself, and therefore I think the, the talent has got to get behind him now. And, and uh, when college football comes on on Saturday afternoons, it's got to be there. 
right here in Miami. What has Howard been able to do that no other head coach had been able to do? Well, <clears throat> I think it's a lot of professionalism. Uh, handling everything as a professional, and I think he learned this through when he was coaching with the Dolphins and, and as he was head coaching, you know, in Baltimore for a period of time and so forth. But he's organization and he don't stay in the office, you know. Uh, he's on the road in recruiting and he helps us a great deal in our, our recruiting and he'll go anywhere you want to go. All you got to do is organize it and he will be there to see any kid in, anywhere in the United States. And we, as assistant coaches, plan his schedule. And for a month and a half, if he's home two nights, he's lucky. And uh, you're very fortunate. Uh, he has a wife that he does it. She understands, and uh, because it would be tough for her, you know, if it wasn't. Everyone we've talked to, and you're almost the last person, they not only support the University of Miami, but people like you seem to have a love affair. What does all the work and all the hard times you've been through, what does it mean now, the culmination of what you're about to embark on in the next few days? Well, it's like last spring I would not have, to tell you the truth, I said, if we win eight games, seven games, we'll be lucky, you know. I said, but you never can tell about kids. And they started coming. And after the Florida game, they started coming. And there was a lot of pressure on the kids as well as everybody else, and, you know, in the community, coaching staff and everything. And they started coming and, and playing and believing in themselves. That's number one. And uh, all of a sudden, they ended up at Florida State. It was to be and not to be. And uh, when it was over, I thought it was a very professional way of ending up a college career uh, season, uh, using the clock in the last three seconds. I thought it was going to run out before, I, before we could kick the point, uh, extra point, field goal. But then uh, it happened as one of the greatest moments of my life, to be able to play in it X number of years ago and come back and coach in it once again. And uh, I'm looking forward to uh, January the 2nd against Nebraska because I love uh, competition. I like a challenge and that's what we got. And we got one big one. But our kids will show up. 